Richard Hayes is a senior research scientist with the New South Wales DPI with over 20 years of experience in agronomy research, specialising in pasture evaluation, soil fertility, perennial crop development. He presently leads two major programs of work, including the perennial wheat feasibility study based at Cowra and an investigation to improve perennial legume persistence through better management of soil fertility. Today he'll be presenting results from an older project um, through, that was um, titled the Evercrop Program, a project looking to integrate perennial species in cropping environments. Uh, and it's, his title is uh, Getting the Most Out of Loosened Pastures, which is very topical for this region at the moment. Good morning and thanks for, for coming along and supporting this event. And just before I start, I, I would like to, to thank, genuinely thank uh, Jeff Martin and the team at LLS for putting this on. One of the, one of the perennial problems for, for people like me, pasture researchers, is you know, pasture is a long-term game. And, um, and typically, you know, if you're, you're doing pasture research, the, the trials have got to be in the ground for three years before you learn anything. But the, the environment in which we operate in, which is often you know, short-term projects, you know, by the time you've learnt something, you've sort of moved on and you're into the next project. And so, so it's a real challenge for us to get our, our results out there. Um, Ten years ago, I was predominantly doing my research in the, in the mixed farming zone out here and west of here. Uh, now, almost all of my research is up in the, in the mixed farming zone. So it's a real um, bonus, a, a, a great opportunity to have events like this, and, and so I hope, I hope you get something out of it, but I hope there's a lot more events like this uh, into the future. So thanks very much. So the research that I'm presenting, uh, as Jeff said, it's, a, um, uh, it's research from the Evercrop project. Evercrop was about getting perennials into cropping rotations. It was actually a big program of work, uh, and, and I'm not necessarily proud of this, but um, a lot of the data that I'm going to show you is up to 10 years old, but bar for the group yesterday, you're the, you're the first growers and advisors to actually see the results. So it's, it's great that it's finally getting here, better late than never. But the, so, so getting perennials into cropping rotations, uh, you know, for this part of the world, that really, that really came back to you know, getting more out of Lucen. Lucen is, of course, our, our, our king of fodder. Um, we don't have that many viable pasture options. Uh, so, so the question for us when we, we embarked on this program was, well, how do we get more out of Lucent? And so we've got a big program of work. Really what we were, we were thinking when we were tossing it around, when we were talking about you know, the project was, you know, can, can we improve Lucent persistence by changed spatial configurations? So, so why would we do that? How good would it be is if, if a farmer could just put the same seed in the ground so not change his rotation, not change his seed cost, but just, just arrange it differently. Wouldn't that be a, you know, a big bonus? It's something that's a tweak that's easily adoptable. Um, the question, of course, is does it work? So let's go through it. So how did we go? We had a large program of uh, a large network of field sites, uh, nine field experiments, six sites. We, we operated in two regions. So of course, we had the River, Riverina region. Uh, and we had three sites in, in more or less an east-west transect, Urungili, Wagga and Marul. And then we had another series of sites up in the central west, so Cowra, Bogangate and Kondoglin. The central west experiments were a little bit different to the Riverina experiments. Uh, so we had six sites, so three, sorry, six experiments, three sites. So what we did is we sowed the experiment at each site and then we came back to each site the next year and re-sowed the experiment because we were interested in the, in the sequence of years. These were cover cropping experiments, so we had four crops, uh, wheat, barley, canola, lupins, and we had a number of, of row configuration treatments. So we had the, the pasture only, and pasture only was loosen and subclover in this case. Uh, we had the crop only. Then we had the, the pasture and the crop mixed in the same drill row, and we had the, the pasture and the crop in alternate rows, so in a sort of a one-to-one -one, um, arrangement, and I'll show you photos of that shortly. Um, you know, all the species were sown at the same time, and as I said, we just came back and repeated the experiment at each site. All of our experiments are on 10-inch row spacings, uh, and because of some you know, constraints with our drill, no fertiliser was applied in the drill row. So if nothing else, the photos looked a picture uh, for field days. You know, we had the, the lupins there in the foreground. Uh, we've got the, that treatment there, with, which has barely got coverable. That's the pasture-only treatment. You can see the, the cereals and you can see the canola. 
That's a close-up look of the, the wheat uh, under sown, sorry, the loosen and subclover under sown under the wheat in every drill row. And by comparison, this is where the, the wheat and the pasture were constrained. So, so the important thing to understand here is where we constrained the number of drill rows, so where we where we we, we essentially halved the number of drill rows into which wheat was sown, we essentially doubled the concentration of seed in a particular drill row. So what that did is that kept the seeding rate the same on an area basis, but just concentrated it, concentrated it in fewer numbers of rows. So that's an important distinction and that's consistent throughout our experiments. Okay, just to, to go over the Riverina experiments, so these, these were pasture only, there was no cover crop in these experiments. There was only three experiments, so, so only sown once at each site. Uh, we had various combinations of, of Lucin, Phalaris and Subclover, um, and, and again the species were sown all at the same time. Again on 25 centimetres, so 10 inch row spacings, and again no fertiliser in the drill row. Now I'm not going to go through all of the uh, uh, treatments here, but here's just a, an example. This is Phalaris and Lucin sown in, in alternate drill rows. Uh, so where, Phil where Phalaris and Lucin were sown um, together, the, the subclover was always sown in every drill row with the perennials. Um, oh, there's the uh, Lucin and subclover uh, in alternate rows, uh, and there is our more extreme treatment where we've got Lucin confined to, to one in every three rows. So essentially what we did is we concentrated the Lucin seed out of three drill rows and jammed it into one, and we had subclover in the remaining two. So that was an experiment. Okay, so what were our key findings? And what we're interested in here, this is actually a large body of work. There's quite a number of, of, of papers actually sitting behind this. Uh, so there's more detail if you're interested. What I'm interested in here, mainly in presenting today, is, is around loosened persistence, loosened density. Uh, and this is a bit of a, a busy graph, so let's work through it. So what we're looking here is, is loosened density throughout the experimental period in the central west sites. So over on the y-axis, we've got loosened density, plants per metre squared, so you know, high is usually better. Uh, along the x-axis, we've got year, year one being the year in which the, the experiments were sown, uh, and right through to the, to the end. Um, we've got nine lines on each graph, so the blue lines relate to the Bogan Gate site, the black lines, the Condoblin site, and the red lines, the Cowra site. We've got the, the open circles, which are the, the nil crop, the pasture only treatments. Uh, we've got the squares, which are the, the one to one, the alternate row treatments. And then we've got the solid circles, uh, which is where the crop and the pasture were sown in, in mixed rows together. Okay. So if we look first at the, the 2013 sown experiments, um, the, the main thing to, to, to look at here is Lucent density declined at all sites, which wouldn't be uh, you know, a surprise to many of you, uh, but declined less uh, at Cowra, uh, where it was sown without a cover crop. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. If we move to the, the 2014 sown experiments, and of course you can see over here we've only got three years compared to four years here. Well, that was because all of the experiments finished at the same time, so the experiments that were sown earlier had an extra year, obviously. Uh, and again, for the 2014 sown experiments, same sites, same treatments, the thing to, to, that stands out there is again this Cowra site, where, where it was sown without a cover crop, uh, loosened density stayed higher. In fact, it didn't decline over that period at all, uh, which was a little bit surprising. So, so that draws us to ask the question, well, what was so different about the Cowra site in, in those sequence of years? And, and we don't really know but it's worth just having a look at the climatic conditions. Uh, so we look firstly at, at, at rainfall, uh, and here again we've got our three sites and our three summers, and so this is just cumulative rainfall for the, for the three summer months uh, in millimetres uh, on the, on the y-axis. And you look at those three groups of gra uh, bars, and you say, well, the, the Cowra site doesn't really stand out from the other two sites at all there. All of the sites and all of the summers received about 100 millimetres of rainfall or more. When you look at temperature though, I think the Cowra site does stand out a little bit more. And this gives us perhaps a little bit of a clue, it's certainly not definitive, but perhaps gives us a bit of a clue about loosened persistence and what drives it. So again, we've got our three sites and our three summers. And, and what I've graphed here on the y-axis is, is temperature, which is cumulative day degrees. So day degrees is 
the average daily temperature added up for the summer period. So it's cumulative for, for the three months. Uh, and, and I mean, the number perhaps doesn't really matter, but what we see here is for the Kaura site, the Kandobalan Bogan Gate, perhaps as you would expect, very much hotter than Kaura. And the Kaura site, particularly these two years, because remember, we still got a decline in loosened density in that first year, so it was a bit drier and a bit warmer. But these second two years, they were below about 2150 cumulative day degrees. So that's, not, that's by no means a perfect number, but it gives us a little bit of a, a target we could use as a guide. And, and, and the thing that we haven't done, and probably I should still do, is go and do a bit of a modelling and sort of the different locations around the region and sort of say, well, you know, how likely are you to receive successive summers with, with sort of temperatures like that and rainfall, you know, at 100 mils or more? Um, so that's, that's on the list of things to do. But nevertheless, and certainly at Griffith and as you move further west, you know, the likelihood of receiving conditions like that in the summer uh, become increasingly less likely. Okay, so we go back to the, the final density uh, at Cowra, and how do, we, how do we measure loosened density? Well, the, in the establishment year it's alright because you can count the seedlings, but once they're established it's not very easy, and the way you've got to do it is you've got to dig them up. And I'm not after any trophies or anything here, but we had to dig up these plants. So these are a metre squared quadrants. So they, these were the fixed quadrants that we would go back and monitor through the pasture phase. And then at the end of the experiments, we went and dug them up one by one. Uh, and I dug up uh, over 8,500 loosened plants by myself. And as I say, I'm not after a trophy, but I'm just making the point that this research is not likely to be repeated very often because it's not easy. Um, so it's rare. Um, so looking at final loosened density. Uh, Again, just to walk you through this, this graph, uh, again, we've got loosened density in plants per metre squared on the, on the y-axis. Across the x-axis, this is site, and I just didn't have the space to, to, to name the site, so I've just put a letter. But here we've got Bogan Gate, sown in 2013, 2014, Kondoblin, sown in 2013, 2014, and Cowra, sown in 2013, 2014. Uh, the different bars relate to the, the row configuration treatments, so the, the pasture only where there was no cover crop, that dark bar. Uh, then we've got the, the, the alternate row treatments and the, and the pasture crop mix. Okay, first thing to notice about this graph uh, is at each of the sites we consistently had a lower final loosened density in the 2013 sun experiments compared to the 2014 sun experiments. Two reasons for that. Likely one is that that, that first summer was a little bit harder. Uh, as we saw in the, the climatic conditions, but of course the loosened plants were a year older in those experiments as well. So perhaps that's not a surprise, that result. The other thing we notice as we, as we look across at each site uh, and compare these two, two bars, you know, it's up and down. They're, they're about the same. We don't get a consistent benefit from, in, in terms of loosened density. Of, of confining loosen to, to half the number of rows, to alternate rows compared to where they're in mixed rows. Uh, but we do at most of our sites, not all of our sites, but at most of our sites, we do get a significant improvement in loosen density uh, where we sow it alone, so without uh, a cover crop. And that's possibly to be expected. So that the, the presence of a cover crop reduced loosen density. Okay, so, what, what are our, our key points from, from that series of experiments? So loosen, it, loosen in all of our experiments declined with time, as, as is probably the case in most of your pastures, except at that one site at Cowra, sown in 2014. Uh, the, the presence of a cover crop, as I said, it decreased uh, loosened density by about 40 per cent, so a significant reduction in loosened density, and that was likely to happen um, well, in fact, that happened at the end of the, the, the first year, so that was throughout the loosened phase that that reduction uh, occurred. Uh, and there was no apparent advantage to loosened persistence in separating the crop uh, in, in alternate drill rows, bearing in mind the caveat that that's on 10-inch row spacings. Now, I would say, and I'm not presenting this today, but there was an advantage with, with the subclover, with the alternate row arrangement, but certainly not with the loosen. And of course, we had that site where, where loosened density was maintained at, at that Cowra site where, where we had you know, 100 millimetres of rainfall or more over summer and, and cumulative day degrees of less than about 2150. So that gives us a bit of a yardstick which we can take further and look at other, 
other uh, environments. If we move to the, the Riverina data, and again, we've got a bit of a messy graph here, so let's just walk through it. Again, we've got loosened density in plants per metre squared over here on the y-axis, uh, and we've got this, the initial loosened density and the final loosened density at these sites. These were all sown in the same year, so we don't have to worry about year one, year two, and that sort of thing. Um, firstly, looking at the site effect, so at Urangili, Marul, Wagga, the, the, the key point here is loosened density was higher and remained higher at the Urangili site compared to the, the sites further west. Um, we move over to the, the row configuration treatments, and I'll just go through the, 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 the legend here. So, so the black is the loosen only, so loosen sown without subclover, without any companions, loosen sown by itself. Uh, then we've got the group of loosen sub treatments, where we've got loosen and subclover sown either in mixed drill rows, in alternate drill rows, so one to one, or we've got that um, extreme treatment in green, where we've got one row of loosen and two rows of subclover. And then we've got a group of Phalaris loosened treatments, either in a mix in alternate rows, or where Phalaris was in one row and loosen was in the remaining two. Okay, so there's a couple of things that stand out in this graph. The first one being that wherever Phalaris was sown, the loosen density, establishment density, was about half as much, around 30 plants per metre squared. It's a simple solution for that, and that was because we adjusted the sowing rates. Where we added Phalaris to the mix, we, we halved loosened sowing rates, and Allah, we ended up with half the loosened density at establishment. So that explains that result. That was just our management. The other interesting result is that by year three, so very early in the pasture phase really, this treatment, this extreme treatment, where we've got one row of loosen and two rows of subclover, where we've concentrated the loosen in only one of every three drill rows, um, loosen density is reduced from about 55 plants per metre squared, which is this, this establishment density, uh, down to, to 30. And it's, it's just interesting that it's about the same level as, as you know, this, this 30 plants per metre squared. So, so these guys here, they didn't decline in density between the start and the end. And this guy here came down to about that same level, about that 30 plants per metre squared. So that, that kind of gives us a bit of a clue uh, that our, our spatial arrangement has had an effect on loosened density, though it wasn't necessarily a positive effect in that, in that instance. So let's just have a look at the climatic conditions in the, at the Riverina sites. And again, we're looking at, at summer rainfall for the three sites, exactly the same as we did in the central west. We've got our, our three sites, but we've only got the two summers here in this instance. And you can see that, um, you know, whereas in the central west we, we, we were at or, or above 100 millimetres of cumulative rainfall for the summer months in each of the years that we, we tested it, well, in the Riverina it was a fair bit drier in those years. Marul never came close to 100 millimetres of rainfall in either of those summers. And, uh, and the other two sites only, only hit the mark in, uh, in, hit the mark, hit the arbitrary mark in one of the two summers. If we look at cumulative temperature, and again, I think that gives us a bit of a clue, um, because remember we said that the Urangili site, the loosened density was higher and remained higher, and Allah, Urangili is the cooler of the two sites, which, which wouldn't be a surprise to you. Um, but nevertheless, still, still hotter than that, that, 20, that, that nominal 2150 day degrees that we, we sort of put on based on, on our experience at the Cowra site. So certainly loosened density would appear to be helped by, by environments that have cooler summer temperatures, which is perhaps logical. Okay, so let's just go back to our establishment density at these Riverina sites. And, and remember we said that the establishment density was around that sort of 55 plants per metre squared. And how does that look when, when we look at it on, a, on an individual row basis? So where our loosen is sown in every drill row, 55 plants per metre squared, uh, equates to about 14 plants per, per metre of, of drill row. Uh, so so this, is, this is just to help, you know, when you're monitoring, this is, just gives you a bit of a guide. Where we confined loosen to half the number of drill rows, of course that equaled about uh, 28 plants per, per drill row, that, that same establishment density. And of course in our more extreme treatments, where loosen was confined to only one in every three drill rows, uh, that equated to, to 37 plants per, mil, per metre of drill row. So the inference here is that 37 plants, because, because loosen density in this treatment declined, 
37 plants in these environments in the Riverina was, was too high a density to be sustained under these dry land conditions. So it gives us a bit of a clue that, that somehow we've, we've, we've gone past a maximum threshold there. And our maximum threshold is probably likely to be much closer to our 28 plants per metre drill row uh, than it is the 37 plants per metre drill row. So that just helps us with, it, with a little bit of our benchmarking when we're monitoring our establishment and you know, what we should be aiming for. Another thing that we were interested in is, uh, in this research was, well, where do, where, does the, the, where do the pasture species end up? Where do they move to uh, after the establishment year? So we came back at the end of the pasture phase and we were looking at quantifying uh, where the species were relative to the original drill row. So to do that, we put that little quadrant down uh, and we could identify you know, the line of squares that was on the drill row and we could also identify the line of squares which is close to the original drill row. And then we have a look at, okay, well, how did the data look? So in the river inner sites, and, and this wouldn't be a surprise to you, almost 100% of loosened plants remained on or close to the original drill row. And you know that because it's not going to move very much. Similar with the phalaris, less but, but still 95% of phalaris plants remained on or close to the original drill row. Anything that moved actually probably was just an expansion of the crown. Uh, but the surprise to me was that even for subclover, still the majority of plants, 80% you know, of plants, remained on or close to the original drill row. And, and that was a bit of a surprise to me because you, know, you think subclover, it regenerates from seed. After, after year one, it's likely to move. How far is it likely to move? I was a little bit surprised that the number was that high. If we look at that in terms of the sites, and again, you know, we've, so Urangili is our more favoured site and Marul is our driest site. The thing that we notice here, and th this is subclover plants, so percentage of subclover plants on or close to the original drill row, um, it was striking to me that well over 90% of subclover plants at the Marul site remained on or close to the original drill row in the third year after sowing. So that, that gives us a little bit of, or actually raises a bit of a red flag to me as to you know, thinking about establishment of, of these pastures. Um, looking at the central west sites again, so again we've got our three sites uh, and our two sowing years, uh, so these are our six experiments. Uh, Lucen, I'm not showing you this, but Lucen was pretty close to the drill row all the time. Subclover, at all of our sites the majority of subclover plants remained on or close to the drill row. If we look at our pasture treatments, um, and so pasture only compared to the pasture crop mix. So where the subclover was sown in every drill row, 90% average across those sites remained on or close to the original drill row. We did have a reduction, so, so another way of looking at that, an increase in movement beyond the drill row in this treatment in the pasture crop one to one. So you imagine where we had the cover crop in year one, we had the crop in one row and the pasture in the other. In year two, the crop's not there. So that that drill row becomes a vacant row. So the subclover apparently did make increased use of that and, and did move into that space, but still the 70% of, of the subclover plants remain on or close to the original drill row. So, so uh, that's, I guess that's the, a, a key take home message. That they do stay close to the drill row and that's especially the case in hotter and drier environments. If we just have a look at some photos now, so this is from Marul. These are photos that are taken in, in February um, and you can see there's a, a high level of bare ground. This is the loosen and subclover one-to-one -one treatments uh, and you can see, you know, they've stayed pretty close to those, those drill rows are pretty visible. I didn't tell you that we had a Bicerula treatment as well. Uh, this is just a photo of the Bicerula but same thing in June. You know, where the trash was in February, this is where the plants have come up. So pretty much what, what our data is showing. If we just have a look at, across a range of uh, treatments, so this is the Lucen Phalaris mix treatment, again at Marul in February. Uh, this is the Lucen subclover mix treatment. This is our two rows of subclover, our one row of Lucen, and this is our, our Phalaris and Lucen in alternate rows. So you can sort of see the treatments pretty visibly. Uh, in year three here uh, in, in summer. And the thing that's striking is we, when we compare that to the loosen only treatment, so when it was sown uh, without 
uh, any, any subclave or with any, add any companion species. Um, I, th I think you can see it, but there's certainly, compared to this guy here, which is the loosened sub, you know, you, at least you've got a bit of a shadow, a bit of trash in amongst the loosened plants. In here, it's pretty much loosened and nothing much else. Um, so, so we did actually measure ground cover. So what did that data look like? So for the riverina sites, looking at our ground cover, uh, again, we had a site effect, so, so perhaps not surprisingly, ground cover at our drier marul site was a lot less, and around 50%, so probably not high enough, actually, for what we'd be comfortable with. Um, but, but ground cover was a lot less at marul than it was at, at Urangili. Uh, Wagga's in the middle. Uh, if we look at our, our treatments here, so this is our, our various loosened mixes compared to loosened sown only, uh, sown by itself, uh, a significant reduction. Now, I'm tricking you here. This is an old trick. It looks like it's half the amount of ground cover based on that bar. That's just a researcher trick to, to, to make it more dramatic. It's actually only about 10% because if you look at that scale, you know, it's 57 compared to sort of 67 up there. So it's, that's there for drama, but it, it is a significant reduction in ground cover. Okay. Um, at one of the sites at Wagga, uh, we did some soil sampling because that was part of a, a more intensive study. But one of the things that we, we took when we took the soil samples was uh, gravimetric moisture content. So, so how much soil water was in that surface, uh, 60 centimetres of the profile. And again, comparing what we've got here is what I've called plant available water in millimetres. And here we've got our various loosened treatments. And, and this was a surprise to me that our, our loosened, where it was grown by itself without any companion species, was significantly drier, and, and in this case, about half the amount of plant available water compared to where lucerne was grown uh, with a companion. So that's, that's quite an interesting finding that. It's, it's, you know, these are small plots, six by four metre plots. You wouldn't expect runoff to be a, a particular issue. The inference from that, and although it's not proven, the inference is that we've lost water to evaporation. The water's fallen on the same plots, but it just hasn't gone in. Uh, and, and, and we're supposing that that's due to that, that effect of ground cover uh, that we saw just then. Uh, and just, just to highlight this point, this is actually from the Central West sites, but it's a, quite a nice um, relationship. <clears throat> what, I've, what I've plotted here is bare ground, so that the inverse of ground cover, so, so bare soil uh, on the x-axis compared to litter cover up here. And for five of our six sites, uh, in the central west, we get this neat relationship. And really what that relationship says is when you're looking for ground cover uh, in loosened pastures, it's the, it's the litter, the unattached plant material um, that's, that's important. The loosen itself, as you know, doesn't provide us a lot of cover. It's the unattached plant material uh, that provides the cover. The relationship fell away a little bit at our six sites, but that's, I think that's because we had this group of points up here where you know, there was plenty of cover, and so we had a bit of a scatter gun. So I think that that relationship is real. The point being, it's in, the ground cover is important, and I think even us as researchers have undervalued that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of a number of people who have run research experiments where we've looked at soil water under lucerne versus various other uh, pasture types, and we found that the, the lucerne plots to be drier, significantly drier, and we've assumed that that's because lucerne drags out more water. But what most of the studies haven't done is looked at ground cover. And so another possible explanation is actually that the loosened treatment with less ground cover has let more water um, evaporate. So, so we've made less use of that resource. Uh, and, and just to, to highlight that point, I mean, another, another uh, explanation around the soil water could have been, well, maybe the loosened grown by itself um, is, is more productive. Um, so we look at our, our dry matter and we see actually the opposite was true. The lucerne was, was actually less productive when it was grown by itself compared to when it was grown with these other species. Uh, so, so it's likely actually that it was less productive because there was less water in the soil, perhaps. So that, that's interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over this, this graph because this light interception data, the point of this graph was just to say that, you know, the, the loosen only treatment didn't use as much light as well, didn't intercept as much light. The point being, when you take into account water and light uh, and the dry matter response, 
the pure loosened spores were shown, I think, uh, to have a, a reduced resource use efficiency, and that's an important finding. Okay, so what does that, all this mean for you guys? What are the implications of this research? Okay, I think, I think it gives us um, a, a few benchmarks for you to monitor uh, your, your, your loosened plants. I think, you know, what we've demonstrated is maintaining greater than 50 plants per metre squared uh, in these dryland environments is possible, as we've showed it was possible at Cowra, but perhaps unlikely. So that might make us think about, well, what's the point of establishing more than 50 plants per metre squared? Um, I think we've, we've, we've got some benchmarks, uh, certainly imperfect benchmarks, but benchmarks nonetheless that we can go and monitor our loosened pastures. So I think our establishment densities can't be more than about 28 plants per metre of drill row. Um, and, and, and certainly should be less than 50 plants per metre squared. So this gives you a bit of a guide, you know, when you're, when you're establishing your loosen, what are you aiming for? And if you were at Kondoblin, you're probably not even aiming for 50 plants per metre squared, you're probably closer to 20 or 30 as, as being what you can sustain. Uh, but what we did show is that row configuration uh, will not help increase loosen density. In fact, in one example, it actually reduced loosen density. So it did help our subclover, and I haven't showed you that, but it didn't help loosen density. So in terms of increasing productivity, we know loosened productivity is correlated with density. Uh, we know that the presence of a cover crop in year one reduced loosened density by about 40% by a significant amount, uh, and that's due to competition for light in year one. But otherwise, loosened density is driven by summer conditions, and there's relatively little that you can do about those conditions, I think, uh, except for those guys who irrigate, of course, but you still can't change temperature. What we showed was that our, our winter growing species, our phalaris and our sub, had relatively little effect on, on loosened density. So we, we know that our loosened density is, is uh, affected more by intraspecific competition over summer, except for in that establishment year where it's grown with a cover crop. And the point about, product, so how do we improve the productivity of loosen under these conditions? Well, it shows that there's relatively little that you can do about summer conditions. So it's likely to be that the productivity of loosen is going to be increased by tweaking that other component of the sward, the winter growing component, because that's where you know you, you, that can be more productive, and it's not going to impact loosen density according to this work. So the final slide, and I thought, well, how am I going to finish this presentation? You know, there's usually got to be um, key take-home message, messages, and I thought, well, you know, another way of putting that was, how would I go and try and establish uh, a loosened pasture? What lessons can we take from this research? And, and I'm going to put a few dot points up here, and you, you'll understand that there's some practical constraints with what I'm saying. So this is the target, and then it's up for you guys to tweak your machinery and think, well, how, how can I incorporate that into my business? So in an ideal world, I would be sowing loosened into standing stubble. I wouldn't put it in with a cover crop because of that competition effect, but I think the cover, you know, that, that the stubble uh, is important protection, and I think the loosen benefits from that. So I would be sowing loosen into standing stubble or some other cover that you've got there. I'd also say loosen on as narrow a row spacings as possible. So I understand that there's constraints with doing that, but, the, but I think that that's the challenge. You need cover in the, in the ground when you're establishing it, but you need these on narrow row spacings as well. You've got to monitor your loose and establishment density uh, and try and aim towards those thresholds that are appropriate to your environment. And they're, they're not going to be you know, greater than 50 plants per metre squared in, in most of the environments in the river arena, I would say. I think we need to sow loosen with a winter active companion. Uh, so maybe that would be Phalaris. Uh, but maybe it'd also be an annual legume, and particularly as we move further west, I would promote a small seeded annual legume. The small seeded legumes, uh, and Mike out here is going to talk a little bit later today, and we can discuss it a bit further. But the small seeded legumes have a, have a bit of an advantage, uh, particularly when you're growing them with lucin. So lucin's a fierce competitor. It's going to make it a very dry spring, and the small seeded species have an advantage in being able to set seed under a dry spring compared to, to larger uh, legumes such as subclover. And I think what we would want to do, and this is certainly what I would do, and I haven't really shown you the data, so take my word for it or read the papers, but I think you would want to sow the annual legumes in every drill row with the loosen. So remember we've got the, the loosen in standing stubble, we've got it on narrow drill rows. 
We're putting the annual leg in in the drill row with the loosen, but I would also like to see the annual leg in, in amongst the stubble as well. So, so in between the drill rows, I think would be an advantage. Now that depends on your cedar as to whether you can achieve that or not, but there's the challenge. And Jeff, I'm over time, so I'll leave it there. We, we don't mind you uh, going over time, Richard, when you've got quality like that. So um, uh, great, great um, presentation, and there's a lot in there for us to take home, I believe. Um, we've, we've